Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six from October, November 2022. This is from the IGCSC paper from Cambridge, paper four, variant one from the 0580 um, exam. And this question here is about vectors. Actually, what I was asked to answer was six part C, but I'm going to just for completeness sake answer the whole question because um, it's not too much uh, time it will take. The first parts are pretty uh, straightforward. So it says 6a, um, you've got two vectors, p and q, given as column vectors like this. We've got to first find 3q. So simply, we just take our vector q and we multiply the whole of it by 3. So 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. 3 times 1 is 3. Simple as that, one mark. Then the next one says p minus q. So we take vector p, 2, 3, and we subtract from it um, vector q, which is minus 1, 1. Just be careful about the signs here. 2 minus minus 1 is like 2 plus 1. And you have 3 minus 1. So you end up with 3 and 3, 2 as your vector for P minus Q. That's pretty simple. Then part 3 says find this. Now what does this mean? It's find this. It's got this these two lines. What it means is basically the magnitude of P. Find how long the, line, the, the vector P is. Right? So we've got to find the magnitude of the vector 2, 3. So basically, if you think about it, the vector 2, 3 uh, would be something like this. If you started from here, for example, and you're going 2, 3, you would go 2 to the right and then 3 up. Okay, and what you're looking for is the length of this line here. Okay, let's make it a bit more realistic. So you go two, two spaces to the right and then three spaces upwards. So you'd be looking for the length of this. This is the vector p here. This is just how to get from one to from the start of p to the end of p, right? So if you think about the vector p, this is actually the vector p, okay? This vector here, all right? We want to find how long that line is. So basically, what we're doing here to find the length of vector p is we need to use Pythagoras theorem because this is right angle. This is two. This is three. So basically, the, the length of vector p is basically just two squared. 2 squared, sorry, plus 3 squared. It's square root, it's just using Pythagoras theorem. So the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared will give you the magnitude of vector p. Okay, so as simple as that. So it's going to be the square root of 4 plus 9, which is the square root of 13. Now this is an answer which won't give you an exact answer. So we should round this to 3SF. So we'll take our calculator and we'll put square root of 13. You can put it just to make sure 2 squared plus 3 squared square root and that gives you square root of 13 which is 3.60555 3.60555 continues on so 3sf will be 3.61 there's the answer to part three so this means find how long the vector p is find the length of vector p the magnitude of vector p so you basically all you have to do is take vector p and we see vector p is 2 3 we square each of the numbers in the vector add them together and then find the square root. Okay, simple as that. And if there's a negative number in here, it doesn't make any difference because you're going to become positive anyway. Then part B says B is a point two seven, and A B is minus four six. Find the coordinates of A. So this is not related to the first question at all. Uh, part A. This is a, a question on its own. It's nothing to do with vectors P and Q, whatever. Here we've got a point, and it's telling us to get from A to B. You've got to go minus four six. Okay, so this is like. Um, the the end of this journey this journey tells you how to get from a to b and this tells you what b is so we got to kind of like trace our steps backwards if we ended up at minus four six and we went two seven we started at the point two seven if we just make a little sketch to understand this i mean you don't really have to do a sketch in the exam just for your understanding like if you start at two seven sorry so if you ended up at two seven Okay, that's 2, 7. That's where you ended up. And to get from A to B, you've got to go 4, minus 4, and plus 6. That means if you ended up at, at 2, this tells you how to go horizontally. You ended up at 2, and you had to go 4 spaces backwards, that means you must have started at 6. All right? And if you had to go, if you ended up at 7, and you went 6 upwards, that means you must have started at 1. Okay, so you can see that the start point A must be 6, 1. Right, you can see that kind of like you go minus 4 from 6 to 2 and plus 6. 
Now, how would you do this without doing a visual kind of representation? This is a vector A to B here. How would you do it without a visual representation? You basically just work backwards. You take the, the point two, all right, and you think, how did I end up? How do I end up at, at two if I had to go four backwards? So you have to just basically do the opposite. So you add four to two, okay, and for the same thing for this, um, you do the opposite operation. So this is seven. How did we end up at seven if we went six? upwards that means you have to take away six so if i'm if i if i gave the, if they gave me the point a and i had to um find the point b then i would go by this vector but if they gave me the end of this they gave me the, the other end of this then i have to use this vector backwards i have to think how do i you can think of it if b is a point two seven and i want to find how to what a is then i need the vector b to a b to a is a vector for six it's for negative six opposite of this B to A is minus AB. So if I want to go from B to A, then I've got to add 4 to the, the X coordinate and subtract 6 from the Y coordinate to get, me, to get me from B to A. Okay, so that's how you can think of it. So you end up with 6 and 1. So you can think about it visually. You can think about it using the reverse of the vector because we're going from B to A. All right, so there's answer to part B. Now we're going to go to part C, which was actually the question that was asked by the student, but I just wanted to, uh, you know, make sure I answer the whole question. It says, in triangle OGH, the midpoint of OH is M, is um, OH and K, the midpoint of OH and K divides GH in the ratio of 5 to 2. Okay, sorry. In the triangle OGH, M is the midpoint of OH. Okay, so M is the midpoint of OH. So that means, you know, if this length and this length will be the same, then the ratio 1 to 1, you could say. And K divides GH in the ratio 5 to 2. So K divides GH in the ratio, this is 5 parts and this is 2 parts, you could say. This is just the ratios I'm writing down. They're not length, they're the ratios. I'm kind of like writing down ratios down. It says O to G is the vector G. So the vector from there to there is the vector G. And O to H is the vector H. Okay, find M to K in terms of G and H, giving your answer in its simplest form. So this four marks of this question, which is the last part of this question, is all about just finding M to K. So I've got to, go the, I've got to find the vector that takes me from here to here. From M to K. That's what I've got to find. So if you think about M to K, we could go from, for example, M to H and then H to K. Okay, that would work. Right, so if I go from from M to K um, by going from M to H and then H to K, that will give us our answer. So first of all, I'm going to think about M to H. Now, I know that M to H is a half of O to H. <coughs> this is a half of O to H. <coughs> because this is the vector H and this m divides this into two equal halves so from o to h is h so m to h is a half of that and i know that h to k is a fraction of the line h to d but what fraction is it? h to g sorry <clears throat> well this is two parts and this is five parts so the total you could say <coughs> number of parts is seven so h to k is two parts out of seven parts of h to g so i got to have two sevenths of h to g now, we know O to H is a vector H, so that's no problem. So this is going to be a half of H plus two-sevenths of, now, H to G. What is the vector from H to G? Now, H to G is, if I go from H to O plus O to G. So H to G is H to O plus O to G, which is minus H plus G. Minus H plus G. So I can replace this with minus H plus G, which is the same as saying G minus H. Minus H plus G is the same as saying G minus H, right? So that now should give me my answer, okay? So you have here a half of H. I have to just simplify it, basically. So I can span this bracket. This becomes 2 sevenths of G minus 2 sevenths of H. So I can, um, this will give me 2 sevenths of G. And I have a half of H minus two sevenths of H. Now that's going to give me, um, make them the same denominator. So half is like seven over 14. 
h minus, and this is like going to be 4 over 14, h, so I end up with, uh, this is 3 over 14 h plus 2 over 7 g. Okay, so I can write it as 2 over 7 g plus 3 over 14 h. There's my answer for m to k. And that concludes this question. Question number six, part C, from the October, November 2022 paper. Question all about vectors. Part C here about vector geometry. Um, so we have to basically find m to k in terms of h and g. And we did that just using these ratios that they gave us. Um, and we must simplify our answer. Okay, always give it by, you know, combining the like terms. So there we ha have it. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear at the top of the page here at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of vectors from IGCSE in the uh, video in this region here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.